On October 1st, nine weeks before Pearl Harbor, a disassembled Whittle W-1 engine was loaded into the bomb bay of a B-24 Liberator and flown to America. General Electric was chosen to manufacture the engine in the United States. The project proceeded under the strictest security. Of the 1,000 employees working on the jet engine, less than 100 were permitted to know what they were building. Just six months after receiving Whittle's engine, GE tested their own prototype, known as the IA. The new engine generated about 1,250 pounds of thrust. Meanwhile, Bell Aircraft was building the airframe for America's first jet. The twin-engine fighter was designated the XP-59A. The completed aircraft was taken apart and shipped to Muir off Dry Lake, California, still under the strictest security. The XP-59 was even fitted with a fake propeller to disguise its revolutionary design. It was the most secure program there was in the military other than the A-bomb. Uh, we, we came up with the idea of that dummy propeller, a wooden ring with four slabs of balsa wood with them out in four different directions. So when the airplane was outside the hangar, we just stuck that on the nose. So from a, from a distance, it looked like a normal propeller. On October 2nd, 1942, just one year after receiving the Whittle engine, the XP-59A Arrow Comet became the first American jet-propelled aircraft. Colonel Bill Craigie was the officer in charge of experimental aircraft, the United States Army Air Corps. After the historic flight, Bell test pilot Bob Stanley offered Craigie a turn at the controls of the XP-59. I didn't really expect to uh, to be offered a chance to fly it. it. Took me two and a half miles to get the airplane off the lake bed when I took off. My recollection of the first flight uh, was at the moment of leaving the ground, it was so quiet, but normally that's the period when you maximum vibration and rattling and shaking of the, and a piston engine and all that. Well, this, because of the type of propulsion, rotary instead of piston action, it was very smooth. And uh, it made a tremendous impression on me. Bill Craigie had become America's first military jet pilot. The XP-59 never performed up to expectations. It barely exceeded 400 miles per hour and didn't handle as well as the best piston engine fighters. Nevertheless, the Air Comet launched America into the jet age.